Get in your seat early. You don't want to miss one play in week nine. Familiarity breeds contempt in St. Charles Parish. Rivals Hanville and Destrehan kick off another battle on the river, and the district title is up for grabs in our game of the week. Carr and Rumble stay on the collision course for a potential Week 10 Catholic League title matchup. And Mandeville tries to claim its first district crown in 11 years without its star running back. Tonight on Fourth Down Friday. Let's start in Old Metairie. Newman, the number one ranked team in the LSWA Class 2A poll and Division Three Select Power Ratings. Visiting rival Country Day, and it was the Jake Randall Show in the first half. On the second play of the game, how about an 80-yard scamper to the crib? Newman with an early 7-0 lead. Still in the first quarter, Randall this time takes the pitch to the right, sheds a tackle and gets in from 10 yards out. Newman with a two-touchdown lead. Second quarter now, same result. Randall will take the handoff and go 11 yards for another touchdown. Newman up 28-0 at that point, and Newman takes down its rivals this afternoon, 42-7. Just two Friday nights left in the regular season, meaning it's time for Metro Area teams to start rounding into playoff form. What up? Welcome to Fourth Down Friday. I'm Ricardo LeCompte. Two bitter rivals hope to be ready for the postseason by winning the battle on the river tonight. Hanville has surged to the top of the District 8-5A standings, and they stand one win away from locking up an undefeated district championship. But the Tigers must beat Destrehan and snap a six-game losing skid to the Wildcats. Seth Lewis watches one at Wildcats Stadium in Destrehan. He joins us live with much more. Hey, Seth. Hey, Ricardo, you knew the battle on the river would be just that, a battle. Hanville and Destrehan certainly putting on a show for all of the fans in attendance. But in the end, the biggest difference was the Wildcats landing some early punches in the second half. <laughs> Destrehan had won six straight battles on the river coming into Friday. Hanville's last win coming in 2017. First quarter, it's the Tigers that land the first punch. Land in Teague. Swing pass to Coa Romero, who takes a 25-yard, runs through a defender, and is tackled at the one. Teague would sneak it in a play later to make it 7-0 Hanville. On the next drive, Destrehan would have a response. Jackson Fields finding LSU commit Phillip Wright for the 35-yard gain. They would kick a field goal to now trail 7-3. Second quarter, the Wildcats, Malachi Dabney showing some toughness, running inside the tackles and into the end zone with a 21-yard touchdown to tie this game at 10. And then right before the break, Destrehan threatening again. Fields with the QB sneak is going to be stuffed on fourth and goal from the two, and this game is tied at 10 at the break. In the second half, the fireworks really started to fly for Destrehan. Fields here finding Greg Wilford for the 25-yard touchdown and the Wildcats lead 17-10. Then on the next drive for Destrehan, it's going to be Fields to Jabari Mack on the slant, and then he makes a nasty juke to the sideline, and he is reaching pay dirt. 24-10, Destrehan leads. The scoring would go back and forth from that point on. Patrick Jackson for the Tigers takes it in from 10 yards out. Hanville trails 31 to 24. And Hanville would get the ball back to try to tie this game on a fourth down. Teague looking for Kobe Lewis, but it's broken up by Wright and Blake Brown. And that is your ball game. Destrehan wins their seventh straight battle on the river, 31 to 24. It's a big one for us. You know, uh, we lost those three games in the beginning. We didn't have our quarterback. We had a lot of missing pieces. So everybody in the state was doubting us. Even them coming in, talking about they're the number one team in the parish. You know, they're going to do such and such. And we came in, took, took their word, and we stepped on it. It's big. Hornville Destrehan is as big as it gets in the state of Louisiana. So uh, this is how it's supposed to be, a close game amongst uh, community members. And you know what? We didn't, uh, we didn't fail to entertain the crowd tonight. I also want to point out that Destrehan running back Malachi Dabney had 253 yards rushing and a touchdown in this game, and he is only a sophomore. Now this district is set up for a three-way tie between these two schools and Terrebonne, and we'll see how that plays out in Week 10. In Destrehan, Seth Lewis, WWL, Louisiana. Destrehan looks like they're turning it on at just the right time. All right, Seth, thanks. Moving to Marrero, Shaw, the top team in the Division II Select Power Ratings, hosting Bell Chase on senior night. 
Eagles led 26 nothing, two minutes left in the half, but there's still fight in the Cardinals. Amari Ambrose going deep to big number 91, Savion Bartholomew. He gets, he's just the junior rumbles all the way down to the one. You did not expect him to get the ball. The Cardinals would score on a keeper the very next play. After the Cardinals force a shot turnover, they're looking for more points before the end of the half. Four ticks remaining in that first half, but Alan Shaw returns the favor and the football. He navigates through the scrum at midfield and keeps going for the 80 yard pick six for Shaw. The Eagles cruise to a 54-7 win. They moved to 2-0 in 9-4-A play. Edna Carr stayed perfect with a big win over rival Warren Easton last Friday. The Cougars need two more wins to wrap up a third straight Catholic League title and the number one seed in the Division I select bracket. But they're facing the only team to defeat them during the regular season the past three years, John Curtis. The Patriots trying to stay in the district title hunt with the win, but they were behind the eight ball early. Cougars off to a good start. That defense forces a fumble and recovers it on the Patriots' first play from scrimmage. Carr, like it's done all year, cashes in off the takeaway. John Johnson to Oliver Mitchell on the slant for the touch. Cougars up 7-0 early, but Curtis would respond after that score. Reggie Johnson to a leaping Xavier Brown in the flats. Great grab, and then he turns on the Jets. The house call gives us a tie game in Algiers. Later in the first quarter, Cougars driving. John Johnson calls his own number, number one in for six. This car offense is so explosive. Car stays unbeaten after the 35-14 victory, and they clinch a share of the Catholic League crown. Rumble trying to keep its Catholic League title hopes alive with a win over Jesuit this evening at the Shrine on Airline. Blue Jays fumbled on their possession to set this up for Rumble. Norman Taylor out of the jumbo set. He finds Pater, three yard touchdown, Raiders seven up. After a general buggage 21 yard scramble on the next play, Corian Hawkins falls over the goal line for the touch, 14 nothing Raiders. We move to the second quarter, same story, Norman Taylor, his second touchdown, a 10 yard score. Raiders up 21 zip, Rommel dominates this one 42 to seven, and they set up that showdown for the Catholic League title next week against Carr. Up next, Mandeville can claim a district title and keep the hopes alive of its first undefeated season in 24 years with a win over St. Paul's. But the Skippers must take down the Wolves without injured star running back Nate Shepard. Highlights ahead, but first, scores from across the metro area. Mandeville's potential perfect season took a hit this week as star running back Nate Shepard underwent season ending surgery. The senior injured his leg on the very first play of the game against Hammond last Friday night. The skippers move forward without their stud and focus on a tough St. Paul's team tonight. With a win, they'll claim their first district crown since 2013. The Wolves rolling into the, into the Sid on a three game win streak. They've also won the last three meetings against Mandeville. Game tied at seven in the third quarter. St. Paul's threatening Brennan Kime and the Wolves get that push at the one yard line for the touchdown. Wolves take a 13-7 lead after the failed two point conversion. St. Paul's adds to the lead later in the third. Kime goes to the air and finds Brennan Vila behind the skipper secondary, a 94 yard connection. Wolves go up 20 to seven, but the skippers fight back. No Nate Shepard, no problem. Colin Dwyer gets the edge, sheds four tackles and makes it a one possession game after the touchdown. Mandeville would rally to take the lead late, but St. Paul's wins it at the gun on a 21 yard field goal. They knock off undefeated Mandeville 30-28. Homecoming over at Titan Coliseum, Lakeshore hosting Hannon in the District 7 for a matchup and not the ideal start for the Hawks. First possession, they turn it over. Audrey Grow picks it off for the Titans. Lakeshore would capitalize off that turnover. Bo Bernard with time throws it over the middle to Kyle Guggenheimer and he won't be denied. That's a, that's a touchdown. Early lead for Lakeshore and the Titans go on for the 48-14 win. Two teams will play for a district championship on Saturday. De La Salle and Kennedy meet at Pan Am Stadium to settle things in District 10 3A. Another metro area team clinched a district title on Thursday. East Jefferson claims a crown for the first time in 10 years. The Warriors beat rival Riverdale to improve the 6-3 on the year. Here's some of their best moments 
from this season. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Friday night on Fourth Down Friday.